narration of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam he states man mata wa huwa lam ya'arif imam al-zamani mata mitata in jahiliya but the one who died without having ma'arifa of the imam of this time he died the death of those in the pre-Islamic period and we've known as the age of ignorance. The key word in this narration that many of us perhaps have taken to memory is the one the Prophet says to the Mata Wahuwa Yad Ya'arif. The word Ya'arif comes from the root word Arafa, which is also the root word of the term Ma'arafa. Oftentimes, we throw around this term ma'rafa, ma'rafa of Allah, ma'rafa of the Prophet, ma'rafa of the Imam. What exactly is this term? You see that in the Arabic language there are several different terms for knowledge. For instance, we have the term ed, we have the term ma'rafa, we have the term ed. We come forth and we see that the term ma'rafa in the Arabic language is not any sort of basic knowledge, but rather a cognitive understanding as a concept and an application of that concept. Thus when we say man mata wa huwa lam ya'arif imam al-zamani ma kamita kan jahiliya that the one who died without having this ma'arafa of the imam of his time died the death of those of, in, in, in the period of jahiliya it doesn't mean solely that we need to for instance memorize you know Everything about the biography of the Imam. Because the term is Ma'arafa. The term is not any for Any one of us can come here, for instance. Any child is going to be able to memorize, for example, the birth of the Imam. The Imam Ali Salaam, Azharallah Ta'ala Faraja, is, for instance, born under the siege of Sha'aban 255 years after the time. He is born, you know, according to Narajah, either in Medina or in Samar. His father is Imam Hassan al Askari, his grandfather is Imam al Hadi, and so on and so forth. And this is all a very basic form of knowledge about the Mahdi. A higher form of knowledge that we mentioned is what is known as Mahdi. Not only to memorize certain facts, and not only to process certain information, but perhaps what we can explain is knowledge of the heart. We come for instance and we see. So on the day of Ashura, Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu wa salam, is surrounded by his family members and his companions. Every one of those on the side of Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu wa salam, had not. But those who were standing on the opposing army, the army of Allah, and in fact, and then on, we see that those, there are the thousand individuals 
many of them, they know exactly who is taking them. They know that this is the son of the Prophet. They know that this is the one who the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa 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 with Ma'rasa of their heart. They fail to understand with their heart, with their soul, with their existence, that this is not only the same as the Son of Allah, but this is the same the divine representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the earth. And this is what causes them to fail in terms of the recognition of them. You see, can you take this example a little bit further? We see that amongst the companions of Imam Hassan, Ibn Ali and Ibn Shkaba, alayhi salatu wa salam, when he went, when he went to fight in that battle with Muawiyah ibn Abbas Sufyan, which eventually led to the signing of that treaty, we find that there were some companions of Imam Hassan, alayhi salatu wa salam, that were ready, that were determined, were absolutely loyal towards the Imam, having ratified the Imam, and in a state of utter submission to the Imam. Then we find there was another group of individuals. But we find what happened. Imam Hassan, alayhi salatu wa salam, eventually what is he doing? Eventually he signed the treaty with Muawiyah. Some of those companions on the side of Imam Hassan, they go toward him. And they say, today we are ashamed to call ourselves the Shia of your father, Ali ibn Abi. They were companions, companions, meaning that they were literally on the physical side of the battlefield with the Prophet Hassan. They said, today we are ashamed to call ourselves the Shia of your father. We are ashamed to be your father. He says, why? He says, because it is not like you or it is not like your father to go and sign a treaty with a man like me. The man of Hassan Ali Salatu is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the earth during that time. The action of the man of Hassan is infallible. The word of the man of Hassan is infallible. The breath of the man of Hassan is infallible. Everything that he does is perfect. Everything that he does is accurate. But sometimes the human being is unable to understand the intellect of the Imam or of the Imams of the other. Imam Hassan alayhi salatu wa salam says, I am acting in accordance with the divine commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ma yantahu an al-hawa ayhu wa illa wa ahlin yuha Every action and every breath and every word of the household of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is the word and the action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These individuals, they fail to have ma'rafa Often to recite this dua, this may be our salute or after our prayers or before our prayers. Allahumma arrifni nafsa. Fa inna ka illa to arrifni nafsa, lam arrif nabi. Allahumma arrifni nabiya, fa inna ka illa to arrifni nabiya, lam arrif hujja. Allahumma arrifni hujja, fa inna ka illa to arrifni hujja, salam. Oh Allah. Allow me to know you. But if you do not allow me to know you, then I will be unable to know your prophet. Allah, allow me to know your prophet. But if you do not allow me to know the prophet, I will not be able to know your divine representative, the successor to the prophet. Al Hijjah, Al Hijjah, meaning in terms of our context, the Imam of our time, Imam of and then we state the most important line of this dua, perhaps Allah in my heart, in the hood, Jacob, the end of the end of the heart, in the hood, Jacob, the hood, Jacob. Oh, Allah, allow me to know your divine representative. Allow us to know the Imam of our time, but if we do not know the Imam of our time, we will have gone astray from the future. We go ahead and we take this example.
I'll go a little bit further. We said that the caravan of the Ramadan is the same, Ali Salatu is Karam, arrives in the holy city of Karbala on the second of Muharram. On the third of Muharram, the caravan of Umar ibn Sa'ad from Kufa, along with 4,000 of his companions, they also arrive in Karbala. Now, we should see that a couple of moments later, after Umar ibn Sa'ad, he sent the message to Abdullah ibn Siyad that a priest of Karbala and the family of the famous surrounding us, or it's also on this land, perhaps the next day, or later that evening, I don't know, that a letter, a messenger came from Abedullah ibn Siyad, who wrote Amar ibn Sa'ad, Abedullah ibn Siyad, of course, the governor of Kufa, Amar ibn Sa'ad, the commander of the army of Abedullah ibn Siyad, the letter commands Amar ibn Sa'ad to make sure that he carries out the mission of killing the man of the same Ali Salatu was Salam, if you go ahead and take a look at the literature surrounding this, you know, the, the margin of Imam al Hussein, we come forth and we see that that moment when Omar al Hussein he received that letter and he read that letter, for a moment he began to reflect. And for a moment he began to think, should I really go and kill Imam al Hussein? He is son of Abu Omar again. He has knowledge of who the man that he's about to kill is. He knows exactly the historical personality of the Sayyid Ali ibn Abi Talib. Thus, it says that Omar ibn Sa'd, when he reads the letter, he begins to recite lines of poetry. He says, If I don't kill the Sayyid, I will, you know, receive paradise and so on and so forth. And if I do kill the Sayyid, then I will take the political status of the governor of Ray and so on and so forth. And eventually, his soul overcomes him and he says that, you know what, I will kill him on the same. And then after that, you know, maybe I'll ask for forgiveness from my boss, Muhammad al Sa'ada, so I can remove myself from the responsibility, and then I can move on to the rest of my life. Of course, we know that never happened, never had that idea. And of course, Muhammad al Sa'ada is one of the greatest criminals in the history of humanity. But in order for us to understand this concept, or for us to understand this perspective, of Ma'arafa of the Imam of Al Qaeda, for today's discussion, we need to reflect upon those symbols of Ma'arafa of the Imam of their time, and those of the companions of Ali Abdullah and Hussein, Ali Salam al The companions of Imam al Hussein, Ali Salatu al Salam, are a lesson or a university. For each and every one of us. For they teach us several aspects in terms of our responsibilities to the Imam of our time. We go for, uh, first and foremost and we see the words of the Imam Ali Salatu Khan, which he describes himself. He said, In the Arab, as hard as Alpha was higher, surely I don't have any knowledge of companions who are better and who are more loyal. Certainly not the companions of Imam al Hassan. The companions of Imam al Hussein, Ali Salatu al Salam, are those individuals who were chosen and selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 2,000 years before the creation of Adam and would have known as the Adam of Islam. The companions of Imam al Hussein, Ali Salatu al Salam, are exclusive individuals and personalities who Imam al Sadiq, Ali Salatu al Salam, instructs us to recite. As-salamu alaykum ya awliya al-wahi wa al-fatah. Peace be upon you, O the men of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The companions of the Bible state, alayhi salatu wa salam, are unique in terms of their status in the eyes of God and in the eyes of humanity. We go and we take a look that there is one quality that allows the companions of Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu wa salam, to be the companions of Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu wa salam. This quality or this blessing is what is known as a tawfiq. Tawfiq means divine intervention from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oftentimes, we are told and we are instructed by the Imams of the Ahl al-Fayt, by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ta'ala, to always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what is known as a tawfiq. 
we sit over here, for instance, and many times we have very lofty goals of what we want to do as a community. For instance, we want to build this, and we want to, you know, sponsor a million orphans, and we want to, you know, have individuals donate, you know, you know, thousands of dollars and so on and so forth. But every time we want to go ahead and perform an action, we're unable to do so. And then we reflect why we are able to do so, and we see that perhaps, perhaps, it is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has removed this tawfiq from us to be able to perform that action. You go out and take a look. And you see, oftentimes there are communities, there are individuals who all the time, though they might have the material, the financial, the physical resources to do a good deed, something always comes in their way, and it hinders them from reaching that goal. And they're unable to do it. And every time they desire to do it, something comes in their way, they get sick, they get ill, you know, uh, some restriction takes place where they're unable to go on and perform that action. This is because of the lack of tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from actually getting to the goal of the performance of that action. The way in which we actually get to the goal and not only to, you know, we actually get to the end of this intention of ours is by seeking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to find help perhaps with the sin that we committed in our lives that is hindering us from doing that, that we ought to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we're able to reach that goal. We go ahead, for instance, and we are told that amongst these da'as that we are instructed to write, that is the to recite, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-umurana khayra. Oh Allah, make the last, you know, events of my life be in goodness. When I pass them away, oh Allah, let me pass away with the love of Ali ibn Abbaqai. Don't allow me to be anywhere else except in the place of worship when I pass away. All of these individuals, these Muslims and Muslims, these days in Hadith and in other parts of the world, have died in the Majlis of Imam al Hussein, Ali Salatu Salam, due to this bombing and due to this shooting, and so on and so forth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. They have a great honor in the fact that their last moments were in the Majlis of Imam al Hussein. Honor for someone to pass away like that. This is the tawfiq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We go ahead and we see, for example, that there is a very famous tafsir in the school of Ahl faith known as a tafsir and al yashi. Many of you must have heard about it, at least you've seen it as a reference and so on and so forth. Shaykh al al yashi was an individual who was a Sunni scholar. In fact, Shaykh al al yashi was an individual who wrote three books. On the merits of the first three Khalafa, Shah al Yashi eventually writes his famous tafsir, and he is the teacher of two of the greatest scholars of Ilm al Rajal within the school of Ibn Hayy, Al Kashir and Ibn Jash. Though perhaps a lot of his life was pushed toward efforts in a science that had absolutely nothing to do with the school of Ibn Hayy, in terms of praising the enemies of Sayyid al Rafa, alayhi salatu wa salam, on the flip side, at the end of his life, he becomes one of the most greatest, most well-known names amongst the scholars in the school of the Bible. By the way, Rav Shalom, amongst the companions of Imam al-Hussein, Ali Salatu al-Salam, we see something very special. Here is the example of a man by the name of Ubaidullah ibn Hur al-Ja'fi. Ubaidullah ibn Hur al-Ja'fi is here. He is a man who is used to support Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wasalam at the bottom of the Sisi. He is a man who refused to go to the defense of Imam al-Mushtaba alayhi salatu wasalam when he went to that battle where he eventually signed the treaty with Ma'ali. And it said that when Imam al-Hussein alayhi salatu wasalam was on his journey from Mecca going, of course, towards Kufa, and of course we know that he ended up in Karbala, he crossed by the caravan of Ubaidullah ibn Hur al Jafi. Now, he not the He rejected Amir al Mu'mineen. He rejected Imam al Hassan. Imam al Hussein, and again, if you read the literature surrounding the tribe of Imam al Hussein, you will know that Imam al Hussein, Ali Salatu Islam, didn't necessarily go to visit everyone that he crossed by on the caravan. Oftentimes, he would send a messenger, he would send Ali al Ashra, he would send Amr al Abbas, he would send someone else in his caravan to go towards those. Uh, villagers, those tribes people on the journey to invite them to come toward, you know, Karbara and defending the family of Allah. On this particular occasion, Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu salam alights his horse in his saddle and goes to a tent of a Muslim. This is 
a blessing. This is an opportunity. We have the, we have the ability. We have the potential to see the light of God. And He was coming directly toward you and I to invite us to be with Him. Imagine what a blessing. Just to see the face of God. Just to get a personal indication of what a God is. You can imagine the type of opportunity that we have. And he invites them to come toward the son. He says that, oh, 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 you left my father and you abandoned him in the battle of Sisu. And you refused to support my brother in the house. I'm giving you an opportunity to fight this war. I'm giving you an opportunity to obtain power. I'm giving you an opportunity to become amongst those, you know, who perhaps millions of people will send their salutations upon when they come to my field. What a blessing. What a blessing. The direct person is the agent of the Lord. But they go on to have a place in our lives. Just before we get to the response, what would you expect? Many of us were quick to say that absolutely we'd be able to support each other. Absolutely we'd be able to support each other. Perhaps some individuals, maybe like myself, who, who begin to question and begin to worry and say, you know, I don't want to finish my education. You know, I don't want to finish my education. I have a lot of uh, debt to go back. And I have a lot of, you know, things to do when I go back home. And I haven't accomplished my life. And I'm so young still. And, you know, give me a couple of years before I have to die. And so we could come up with a billion excuses. I'm going to go out to lunch. I think what's more than I'm going to I'm going to sit out and sit out and sit out. I'm going to I'm not sure. I'm not ready for all of that. I'm not ready for such a commitment. But I'll tell you what. I have the fastest horse in all of Arabia. And you can have that. My has come to you to give you the opportunity to be directly admitted to the paradise in front of the Lord of the Holy Spirit. I just have to sit out and 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 I'll tell you this. But this horse, one day, you're going to need it. So make sure you hold on to it. And it's time that my son of Mayo will come back on that journey. I beg your pardon, Mayo. He needed that horse to run away from him because it was really one of the fastest horses in all of Arabia. This is the story of the Lord of the Lord. God, who had the ability to pounce on an opportunity, but something stopped him, and I want to kind of try to remove what the fear. Flip side, we have a man by the name of the Arab and the Arab. Who is the Arab and the Arab? The Arab and the Arab, according to historians, the man is known as Mani. As Mani meaning one of those enemies of Ali ibn Abi Talib. He was an individual who believed that Amir ibn Abi Talib, the Arab and the Arab, was responsible for the killing of Uthman, and he himself wanted to be amongst those who take revenge by shedding the blood, the blessed blood of Ali ibn Abi this is the heart of the heart. What the man of the city had to say. Crossing the caravan of the heart of the heart. And we know, and we've heard many times, that the heart of the heart was one of those individuals who was doing his very best to not see the man of the He didn't want to have to have that encounter. He didn't want to have to look at the face of the city. Eventually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perhaps in divine intervention, took place. The caravan of the man of the city the heart of the heart. Is going towards, you know, Iraq, it crosses. Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu wa sallam, he also comes back to this time. He comes back to this place. And he says to the Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu wa sallam, what happens in that conversation? As you all know, nobody knows. What we do know is that the heart of the heart drastically looked into the heart of Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu wa sallam. He took a glance at the face of Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu wa sallam, he mentioned the very first night. All we have to do is demonstrate with one's life in that good faith towards those around us and see the potential for change in their hearts. So the subject now, perhaps the heart of the heart of the will be subject to the beautiful face of the man of Hussein. And it's a lot of the time to tell God, I Allah is my Arab, Salah and the Rashida, Wal Hurra to the Hamida, what could now be the Rashid Mahi, Wajib Salah, 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 Sal
going to give me the blessing of having one glass of the face of the Messiah. What would that be? What change in our lives would take place? It is something to heard of the Messiah, who was an enemy of everything that made after that few minute conversation with the Rabbi of the Sayyid Ali Salafi Salam, who comes to the side of Abba Abdullah, and on the day of Ashura, the heart of the Messiah, according to some stories, is the commander of the left wing of the army of Abba Abdullah. Imagine. Who also he would have been amongst those who condemn him, and on the flip side, he would have been greatest soldiers of Imam al Hussein, Ali Salatu Salam, for the night of Ashura, when Imam al Hussein tells everyone to go and take a family member and head back to wherever they came from, the head of Al-Fayyid was the first one to stand in front of Imam al Hussein and say, Oh, Allah, I'm so glad. If they were to take our body, if they were to cut it into pieces, and then they were to burn it, and then spread our ashes all around Karbara, and they were to, and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, were to resurrect us and do it a thousand times over, would always be the same. This is the These are the qualities of the companions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amongst the qualities, amongst the characteristics of the companions of the Bible, to say, Ali Salatu was around that separate them and make them the cream of the crop, there are seven. Number one, we see that the companions of the Bible, to say, Ali Salatu was around, are amongst those who put their entire trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and their trust in Allah. What is the Trust their affairs by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be sufficient. We need to also be amongst those who constantly entrust our affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And trust our affairs to Wali al Amr, Imam Sahib al Zaman, alayhi salatu wa salam, and knowing he's always there taking care of us, watching, watching over us, and he is the governor of this universe as appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amongst those companions, we give just that as a man by the name of Muhammad ibn Bashir al Hazrat. He comes to where Imam al Hussein, Ali Salatu was found in the day of Ashura, and he says, Ya Allah, how did you My son has just been captured by a regular in the Yaz army. He was trying to make a journey towards Kafara, and he was captured. So we know many of the supporters, many of the Shia, many of them were imprisoned in Kafara. This is all about the God, but my son is just the same. At this moment, I'm going to be sitting on the ground. This is what he says. He says to the Abba, and he gives it to the Hundred of the Shira. I'm going to be able to get you to go to a place and sell this about how it is to be, how it is to the cloak of the Holy Prophet from the Lama Ali Muad. Go to a group of Salafas that has some value amongst the people, take that money, and pay the ransom, and then move yourself to the I'm not here to tell you about my son, to complain, or so that you can, you know, give me an ass, I can go back home. I'm here to tell you about my son, to let you know that he is also in prison here. No way I will ever leave you. Joined you on the journey to Kerbala, and I made an agreement with these two companions. He said, What was the agreement? He said, The agreement was that if we actually have to go out, I am not ready to go. That's what he said. Go back home. And I'll be like, I'm just a man that doesn't have Maharafa, I can't work with this man. But then Imam al Hussein Ali Salafi was around, so he said, Brother, how are you going to go back? We don't have any more. Horses, all the companions, all the family members have been killed by this point. Because we don't have any horses, we don't have any means of transportation for you. He said, Oh, I'm a black guy. Take one horse in the middle of the camp, get out of here, please. I'm not going to take the and get out of here as fast as possible. But when I make the call, I'm in my son, I'm in Corona. And if you hear me, you'll be taken out of here. He's not a good guy. He's not a choice. Amongst the quality separated from that, Muhammad. And about like this is the fact that the 
entrusted their affairs by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they entrusted their affairs to them. Secondly, we find amongst those important qualities or characteristics of the companions of the Imam, alayhi salatu wa salam, is the fact that they were amongst those who were the greatest of the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The night of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that on the eve of the night of Allah, on the eve of the tenth of Muhammad, meaning in the afternoon of that day, in reality the tragedy of Karbara was supposed to have taken place on the night of Muhammad in the evening, meaning on the night of Ashura. But we go out and we see that Imam is saying, Ali Salatu wa Salam, sends Abu Fadl al-Abbas, Ali Salatu wa Salam, towards the army of Abu Rahim Sa'ad. And he said, oh, Abu Rahim Sa'ad, grant us this one night, inshallah, for the night of Ashura, we will uh, recount this particular tale. And Abu Rahim Sa'ad goes towards the army of Abu Rahim Sa'ad, and he said, oh, Abu Rahim Sa'ad, your master Hussein has told me and asked me to tell you and tell you that we need one more night. We need, we need not one more night in preparation for battle, but we need one more night to worship our Lord Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and to spend it in the reputation of our Lord. This is the vision of Allah Ta'ala of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. This is the first time I have prayed for Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala, seeking forgiveness of Salah to the day, so on and so forth, until the narrow of space. But as I was walking between the tents of the Imam of Hussein and his companion, I would see people standing at the arm and the pool and the sujood. And the only thing that I was hearing was that the buzzing of the bee of those who said that I'm not going to be an animal. We want to be a family. And actually, the parents of our Imam need to follow suit with this. But we see oftentimes when we try to manifest the worship of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala desires from us, we see we have to complete our own. For instance, for those, for those of you who have been to Hajj, especially very recently, for instance, perhaps. You go and you're performing tawaf around the Holy Kaaba. In fact, a couple of years ago, uh, on the big Apple iPhone, but if you haven't uh, caught that already, uh, a couple of years ago when the iPhone came out, with FaceTime came out, the very first time, some years ago, it had, and the phone had just come out, and people are in the midst of performing a tawaf around the Holy Kaaba. When someone is talking to me, I remember that he got a phone call, FaceTime called with his mom. In the middle of the tawaf around the Holy Kaaba, in the front of Baytullah al Haram, he picks up his phone and says, Salaam alaikum, ma'am, look where I am, look what I'm doing. You see, sometimes we are, we are, our hearts, our souls, we're not focused on the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The closest point of a believer in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when they're worshiping Allah in the future. Oftentimes, you know, we're going to the ziyar of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, and I'm going to inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted the ziyar of Hussein alayhi salam, inshallah. You have people, they're in the midst of the ziyar, and they're looking at their watch every second. But if you go finish up this very quickly, they're going to miss much of it. How do your mind and your heart and your soul fixate on that moment? The companions of Abu Abdullah and Hussein, alayhi salatu wa salam, they were at that moment. They were aware of their surroundings, and they were aware that every step that they took on that day was solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the at the time of Salat and Zohar on the day of Ashura, the companions of Imam of Hussein, Ahmed Salat and Salat, one of them in particular, Imam of Ibn Abu Salama, who comes to where Abba Abdullah and says, Oh, Imam of Hussein, look at what the sun looks like at the time for Salat and Zohar, and I want to make sure that when I enter into paradise, that I want to uh, perform my last action, as a performance Salat, to have you to have the Ashura. Gather them all together, they pray Salat al Jama'ah. Abu Salam al Sayyid, the Imam of the Sayyid, continues Salat al Khawf. He turns around to Abu Salam al Sayyid, a man who does not die until he finishes his prayer. Until he says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. His last words to Imam al Sayyid, and he has the arrows pierced through his body, is, Al Wasayyid ya Allah. Have I fulfilled my covenant toward your Imam of Hussein? Imam of Hussein, I have salat and salat and salat and salat and salat and salat and salat. Yes, absolutely. You are amongst those who are before the Imam of Hussein. The worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thirdly, we come forth and we see those who have this intense love for the Imam of Hussein. Now, this is another important quality which the companions of Imam of Hussein are the salat and salat and salat. The other day we mentioned the story of Adis. You see, Muslim ibn Aqeel, 
the stock of the stock, they were almost they considered themselves entirely full of the market data. And we put this again in order for us to understand the more practice. To this day, there are many people who try to question, for instance, some narration or some ideas that they have made out of the first process. Sometimes we read about something very metaphysical, we read about the Arsh of Allah, we read about angels, or we read about the or we read about Jim, or we read about, you know, uh, the Hellfire or the Gardens of Paradise and so on and so forth. We read the Bahadi and we don't necessarily understand them. Oftentimes what people do immediately is they say, you know what, this doesn't make any sense. No way the Imam will say it. And we do something like that as well. It's potentially disregarding the words of the Arsh. Your words are a life. And the purpose of a life is to illuminate, is to illuminate the heart, is to illuminate the soul. And when you say that this word of the Imam doesn't make any sense, and therefore it's no way to accept it, in reality, what are you doing? To accept potentially marginalizing the words of the Imam to them. Rather, when you read something, you don't understand something. Or, for instance, you read the Mahsa, and it says that Abu Salaam Qadr Abbas Ali Khan killed this many hundred of people, you say there's no way of it. Maybe Abu Salaam did kill them. Maybe Abu Salaam was just that type of a boy. Maybe Abu Salaam Abbas, you know, he does have that connection. Who do you to say that? Now it's that or it's that. You say to them, well, I don't know if this is true or not. But what I do know is that I'm going to take them and I'm going to take them. If I don't understand it, then I can take them. Come over here and say, what happened? This is just true. This is the task that we have to understand and to recognize and to realize that the Imam that we have to take the exact quality of whatever they say and whatever they do and whatever they order for us, immediately we should be amongst those who submit to that. Let's see that the companions of the Imam of Hussein are described to Islam amongst these types of people who hold these characteristics, who have ascended this level far beyond the level of the angels, the Imam of Hussein, and then Ali Salaam of Islam, who states that in the Quran, of the Sahaba, how far was Hayran, which is kind of surely I don't know of any companions better or more loyal. One by one, they would go out and they would actually go to battle to battle. And they would all eventually make that call to Salaam alayhi wa alayhi And of course, we'll make mention of exactly some other qualities that are not the same as companions on the night of Ashura, but just to demonstrate exactly what type of people they are before we get into the Masad. Let me explain this to you. I said that one day, or on the journey of the night of the same, and his family, family members, and his companions. They cross by one particular town. They cross by one particular city. Imam al Hussein al Salatu Salam gathers all of his family members, all of his companions, and he tells them, O oh family, O oh companions, make sure that you go toward this well, because this is the place that the well of water. Go toward this well and fill all of the vessels that you have with water. They go, they, fresh, they, 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 they go immediately and they follow the instruction of the Imam. The story is right. For the second time, the Imam of Hussein Ali Salaam to Islam says, Oh, companions, go and fill all your vessels from the bottle with water. Imam of Hussein says, Who said you go to this well? And the Imam of Hussein Ali Salaam to Islam complies with that caliber of what they've been instructed to go immediately to the well. They say once again, have to fill up whatever was left in the place there with water. A third time, the Imam of Hussein Ali Salaam to Islam commands his companions and his family members to go and make sure that you fill all of the vessels of water with water. Not one of them questions the Imam of Hussein Ali Salaam to Islam. The Imam of Hussein Ali Salaam to Islam has no privacy, he has no foresight to determine that after this particular town, The water supply and panic of the family members of the Imam of Hussein would eventually suffer. And from those who happened to be the family members of the Imam of Hussein, 
One day in the youth of Habib ibn Malala, the Holy Prophet was walking in the streets of Medina. He's walking in the streets of Medina with a group of his companions. And he sees that a, that, 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 that a group of children were playing. Amongst them is the moment of Sayyidina Ali Sarah, who goes towards the Prophet Sayyidina Ali Sarah, and he says, Can you please sit down? And then he goes toward another child who is a little bit elder than him. He goes toward this child back and he sees him in his back and embraces him and he hugs him and he kisses him and he looks toward his companion and says, This boy, this young man, is amongst those who I love to be the servant of my son. And they said, Oh, my son, why do you take such a thing? He says, Because I see that whenever my son Hussein is playing in the sound, Whenever he takes any step, that this boy, Habib ibn Malak al Asadi, he goes toward the stand where Imam al Hussein just stepped upon, he takes up that stand and he puts it on his face, recognizing the fact that he is nothing but a servant of Allah and Allah, and what a servant that is. It is said that when Habib ibn Malak was in Kufa, it is said that one day, him and Nathan al Tamar, the one who valued the love of Ali ibn Habibar in his heart, they were one day walking, or they were one day riding in the streets of Kufa, and it was said that they, that they sat down. And it was said that Habib ibn Malah looks toward Nathan and Tamar. And he said, Oh, Nathan, it is as if that I can see that day in the future when you will be crucified on the tree as you're reciting the Salah and the merits of our master, Ali ibn Abdullah. It is said that at this moment, of course, they were both told that it was going to happen for them. It is said that at this moment, Nathan and Tamar looked toward Habib ibn Malahar, and he said, Oh, Habib, and it, and it is as if that I can see that day when you come toward the support of our master Hussein, and you are killed in front of him. It is said that Imam Hussein, Ali Salatu Salam, who mentioned, is it not necessarily in life behind directly right now? But amongst those letters, he had upwards of 12,000 letters. According to historians, that came from Kufa toward Medina toward Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu wa salam, but we find that Imam al Hussein only writes very few letters back toward Kufa. Amongst the letters that he, that, that he writes toward Kufa is toward his childhood friend, is toward one of the companions of Rasulullah, the companions of Amir al Mu'mineen, Habib ibn Allah, and as we just said that Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu wa salam, he arrives in Karbala. He gathers together his companions, he gathers together his family members, and he realizes and he recognizes that one of his companions are missing. Perhaps at that same time, Habib ibn Mubarak, he also received this letter from the Prophet Hussein alayhi salam. It is said that he was sitting with his wife at that moment, and he received the letter from the messenger. He opens up that letter, he begins to read, he begins to cry, he takes that letter, he folds it, and he puts it in his hand. And his wife comes forward and says, Habib, Habib, why are you reading? This is a letter from Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abdullah, who's inviting him to come and support him, and he's about to be martyred on the plains of Karbala. His wife says, Oh, Habib, and what are you waiting for? Get up and go. It is said that Habib ibn Mabar al Asadi he goes toward his servant, and he says, Oh, servant, a slave of mine, you have to be very secretive when you leave Kufa because of the government and the restrictions and the pressure. We will leave in the middle of the night. So you go ahead and take my horse toward the outskirts of Kufa, and I will meet you there in the middle of the night. If for some way, some reason, some rhyme, I'm unable to make it, I'm cut by the authority that I'm killed, then know that you are a free man. It is said that that evening, the, the servant of Habib ibn Mabahar goes toward the outskirts of Kufa, and Habib ibn Mabahar leaves some hours later. It is said that he's waiting over there for his master Habib. He's waiting in the time that they promised to meet past. It is said that Habib ibn Mubarak is coming, coming a couple of moments late, and from a distance he sees his servant. The servant is talking toward the horse and saying, Oh horse, 
do you think that I'm going to leave Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu wa salam that if my master Habib is unable to make it, then certainly I will go and I will represent him on the day of Ashura. And it said that Habib ibn Mawari approaches the servant of his. He says, Oh, my servant, you are blessed, you, you, you are blessed with the opportunity to become freed. He says, I will not be freed, for I will only be freed once I die in the way of the same. It is said that they make the journey towards Karbara. The companions of Imam al Hussein, alayhi salam, they're awaiting Habib ibn Mabahar from a distance. Habib comes. He meets the caravan of Imam al Hussein, alayhi salam. Imagine the scene of his that those close companions, they begin to celebrate. They begin to become very joyful. With, as Habib has entered into their camp, the news has spread across toward the camp of the women. The women may also begin to celebrate. They begin to hear the good news of Habib's arrival. It is said that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he embraces Habib ibn Nabahar. And he said, Oh, Habib, I have just left the camp of Zainab, and she sends you her salam. It is said that at this moment, Habib ibn Nabahar, he sits on the ground, he takes off his amama, and he picks up the sand and Kirbala and puts it on his head. And he says, No, 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 I try to sing the Malay and Zainab. Who am I to receive the salam of Zainab? It is said that Habib ibn Nabah, he gets on his words. It is said that he's preparing for battle when one of the army from Amr ibn Saab, the Imam al Hussein Ali Salatu Islam, begins to perform Salat in Saj. And it is said that Amr ibn Saab, or one of those in his army, say, Oh, Imam al Hussein, no point of you praying for your prayers is not even successful. It is not even going to be accepted. At this moment, Habib ibn Mabar looks toward Amr ibn Saad and he says, Ya Amr ibn Saad, Salatu ta Tukhban wa Salatu ibn Abin ta Rasulullah la Tukhban. That the real prayers are accepted and the prayers of Hussein are not accepted. How can it be? And it's said that Habib ibn Mabar gets angry at that moment. He gets onto his horse and he goes and he fights in the way of Aba Abdullah. Historians, they say that Habib ibn Mabahar, he kills 62 of the enemy opponents until he makes out that final call, As-salamu alayhi. Ya Abu Abdullah, Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam leaves the tent. He runs towards Habib ibn Mabahar. He places the head of Habib ibn Mabahar on his lap. And it's said that he goes with Muslim ibn Awsaja. Habib looks toward Muslim and he says, Oh, Muslim, or Muslim ibn Abdullah, has been killed kill soon before Habib ibn Mabahar. And finally, after that, Habib ibn Mabahar has fallen. He makes that call to Imam al-Hussein alayhi salatu wa salam. He looks into the eyes of Habib ibn Mabahar. He prays again. He blesses him. He makes out that final salutation. But that's not the most tragic part of the journey. It is said that when the caravan of Imam Zain al-Abideen, when the caravan of Lady Zainab, they were, uh, they, they, they were paraded from Kerbera toward Kufa, from Kufa to Damascus, it is said that all of the heads of all of the family members of all of the companions were raised on spears. Many of them were, were tied through different ropes and they were dragged on the floor. It is said that there was one child. He was looking at from the caravan of Imam al Hussein and he was following one head wherever it was going. So it is said that that individual who was in charge of the heads, he goes toward this boy and he says, Oh boy, what are you doing always following this head? Why are you always looking at every movement that I'm making? He says, Oh man, that is not. That, that is the head of my father, Habib. But I tell you this, O oh, Mu'min, I swear to you that Habib ibn Mabahar, his only attention was to the head of Allah Abdullah, which was being struck by Rabbi, which was being struck by spears, by, 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 by Shabbat ibn Jalshan, and by Yudhi ibn Mabahar. <laughs> 